Hi everybody, I'm Bob Sircost and I first of all want to thank you for taking the time out for this very special online training as you prepare to tape the show, What a Great Idea, about your product, your service, your business, or your idea. We are excited about you coming into the studio so we can tape your segment. However, you need to be prepared and that is the whole goal of this particular training series is to give you the information that you need to maximize when you come down to talk about your product, service, business, or idea. Now, over the past 30 years, I have learned one thing without question, and that is there are two key elements to marketing anything successfully anywhere, whether it be on the internet, whether it be on television, whether it be on radio, or even face-to-face. -face. You have to have two key elements, and I've identified these elements as P and D. P and D. Now the P stands for presentation. Presentation. I'll talk more about that in just a moment. But the D stands for distribution. Now what do I mean about distribution? Well you've got to be able to get your product out there. You have to be able to have others see what you have and know about what you have. You could have a great product, you could have a great business or service or idea, but if nobody knows about it, you're never going to be able to maximize what you have. So the distribution part of the two elements, successful uh, marketing, key to successful marketing, we're gonna take care of that when you come on down to tape the What a Great Idea show. That's the distribution part, to get what you have out there. Let's go back to the P for just a moment. The P stands for presentation. Presentation, now what do I mean by that? Well, you have to be able to create the need for what you have. Uh, once again, you could have a great product, you could have a great service or, or business or idea, but if you can't effectively communicate what you have, if you can't get others to, to, to want what you have, if you can't create a need for what you have, then you know what? No one is going to respond to what you have. So even if you have great distribution, you have to still be able to effectively present what you have. That's what we're going to focus on on this particular series of training. We want to prepare you on how to present effectively your product on the show. And that's how we're going to start. Let me take a moment though uh, to briefly, very briefly explain a little bit about what I do and, and my background. Over 30 years ago, I had the very good fortune to be there at the beginning of, of an entire new industry. I was, I was able to help create something that never existed before called the home shopping business. And I'm sure many of you out there have heard of home shopping. Home shopping, truly a phenomenon in the marketing world, did a couple of things if you think about it. First of all, it certainly changed the way that we shop, it changed the way that we buy merchandise, but it also changed the way that we market merchandise. And today, the entire home shopping industry generates over $12 billion every single year. And one thing the home shopping industry has been able to do is, is really perfect those two key elements that I talked about, the presentation and the distribution. And that's where this training series comes in to play. We're going to share with you how to effectively present what you have on our show, which is now going to be your show, What a Great Idea. So we're going to get started. Now, once again, the, the home shopping industry started 30, uh, over 30 years ago, very small radio station in Clearwater, Florida, as a matter of fact. And it started, believe it or not, on a radio station. It wasn't on TV, it was on radio. And this was a very small radio station. Not only was it a small radio station, it was the world's worst radio station, all right? And it had nothing to do with selling merchandise. It was a news talk format, that's what it was. And I had a talk show every day from noon until three o'clock and we talked about politics and what was happening around the world and the issues of the day, just like every other talk show. Uh, but once again, since this was the world's worst radio station, it was challenging to be able to sell advertising. But the owner of the station, a gentleman by the name of Bud Paxson, he would go around town and he would, he would not on business store after business store and he would sell a few advertising contracts here and there not very many but a few here and there and one day he sold a 13-week advertising contract to an appliance store in Clearwater Florida and so for 13 weeks on my talk show we advertised this appliance store 
At the end of the 13-week cycle, Bud went in to collect on the advertising bill, and the owner of the appliance store met him at the front door, and he was furious with Bud. And Bud said, wait a minute, what's the problem? And the guy who owned the appliance store said, you know what, now one person, not one, has come in here and said they heard my commercial. He said, nobody listens to your radio station. And then he said something to Bud that changed everything. He said, I'm not going to pay you for the advertising. And Bud said, wait a minute, you know, we had a deal. They went back and forth. Finally, the guy who owned the appliance store said to Bud, I tell you what I'll do. Instead of paying you in cash, I had a big shipment. Look back there by the door. I had a big shipment, a couple of boxes of merchandise come in. Take a box of merchandise instead of cash. So Bud, by this time, was probably so frustrated, he felt like he was, he was okay if he left with something tangible. He picked up the box of merchandise and he came back to the radio station and he came into this little booth where I was sitting taking a break from my talk show and he walked in this little booth and he was holding in his hands an electric can opener. Now this was 1977, so this was one of those avocado green ugly, I mean ugly, electric can openers. And he looked at me and he said, Bob, when you come out of the news, I want you to sell this can opener. I said, well, you want me to do what? He said, I want you to sell this. I said, sell? I remember saying to him, Bud, wait a minute. I'm a newsman. I have morals. And, and I have ethics. What do you mean you want me to sell some? Then he explained to me the relationship between me selling that can opener and me getting a check. And instantly, that can opener looked pretty good. So I came on after the news. I started describing the can opener. Long story short, at the end of that day, people started to call up. In fact, I didn't even know what those telephone lines were because nobody ever called me before on my show. <laughs> and, and, and pretty soon, the line started to light up. And that day, it was August 28th, 1977, we ended up selling 112 electric can openers. And that was the beginning of the entire home shopping industry as we know it today. Bud, being a great marketing guy, said, wait a minute, I made more from selling the can openers than I would have from the advertising. And so every day after that at two o'clock, we stopped my radio show and we had a product spotlight. And we featured a product uh, of the day. And pretty soon more and more people started to call up and order from us. And, and, and the five minute segment went to a half hour, went to an hour. And then we went to local cable TV. And then in 1985, we went nationwide. And as they say, the rest is history. But to go back to those early days on radio, uh, our shifts at that time, we were on the air eight hours a day, nine, 10 hours a day, constantly pitching the product six days a week, many times seven days a week. I mean, there, there was a high burnout factor, no, no doubt. And I remember one day I went into Bud's office and I said, Bud, I quit. I can't do this anymore. And he said, what do you mean you quit? I said, what I really said was, if I see one more cubic zirconia diamond, I'm gonna scream. I mean, what else can I say? I've said everything I can say. He said, why are you quitting? What don't you like about this? And I remember saying to him, I said, Bud, I'm not a salesman. I don't wanna sell. I have no interest in selling. And he said something to me at that moment that I had no idea what he was talking about. He said, Bob, you've got to, you've got to remember one thing, that selling has nothing to do with sales. And I thought for a moment, I said, wait a minute, selling has nothing to do with sales? What, what does that mean? And then he said something to me that truly changed my professional life. He said, Bob, you've got to remember one thing above everything else, and that's this that when you are selling something, you are doing something to somebody. But he said, when you are helping someone, you're doing something for somebody. And when I started to think about selling from a different perspective, not a selling perspective, but when I started thinking about what I was doing from a helping perspective, everything changed. Because instantly I felt better about what I was doing. But he, here, here was the challenge, here was the problem. Before I had that conversation with Bud, I was taking a look at whatever product I had to go on the air and sell, and I was asking myself, how am I going to sell this? What do I have to say about this in order to sell it? Furthermore, what do I have to say about this in order to get others to buy it? And what Bud was telling me, I was doing it all wrong. What he was telling me to do was to take a look at what I had and ask the question, how is this going to genuinely, honestly, sincerely help the other person? So my whole message to you is, as you think about your product, your service, your business, or your idea, you want to sell more of what you have? 
Here's the best advice I can give you. Stop selling. Start helping people with what you have. Determine how what you have is really going to help other people. People, and you will be amazed at the results that you're going to get. So when you tuned into this training, you're probably, probably the thought went through your mind, how am I going to sell my book? How am I going to sell my product or my service? How, how am I going to sell it? Once again, by not selling it. By truly helping others with what you have. As a matter of fact, I even think I wrote it down. What Bud told me that one day, because it truly, it truly did change my life. Once again, I want you to see it in writing. When you are selling something, you are doing something to somebody, but when you're helping someone, you are doing something for somebody. So it changed everything that we were doing. So from this moment on, I don't want you to think about selling anything that you have. I want you to think only about how what you have is going to help other people.